So Ross and Richard from Ponders Arena, welcome to Irish Startup TV. Thanks very much, Rich. We're delighted to have you. Yeah, delighted to be on it. So tell us a little bit about the business. Um, we kicked off Pond Arena in November 2013 and uh, we've seen it grow from 386 users to now 1.4 million monthly. Um, so it's, it's, been a, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, me and Richard started in a, in a room not too, not too far from the sides we're in now with just two of us and uh, to be up to 10 staff. And obviously we're, after raising this round of investment, uh, it's exciting to try and double it and obviously really scale the numbers of users we got. Fantastic. So, for anybody who might be watching the video who hasn't heard of Pond Arena before, you're effectively a crowdsourced sports media reporting journalism business. Yeah, so what we've done really is we've democratised um, journalism, so it's like citizen journalism. So Pond Arena is a sports media platform that empowers fans to become paid journalists. So you notice there's a massive hunger out there for people to start writing about things they're passionate about. We saw that with Rise of Vlogs and things like that. But people are also struggling to earn money from it. So what we've done is we've created this revenue model or this payment system that enables guys to get rewarded for their really good work and things like that. So instead of people living off their reputations and stuff, if you're really passionate and articulate about sports, then you'll be rewarded by Pundit Arena for that. So if you're just a guy in college or you're just a guy working in financials or anything like that, and you want to write for us, then you can earn upwards of 500 euro per month with us. It's fantastic. So citizen journalism is uh, quite a contentious topic at the moment because uh, sort of journalism is all about the story and there's a big question about can anyone be a journalist? So how do you filter for the quality? Yeah, I think uh, you know we've been big on that from day one. Uh, so you, it's not just an open door upon the really. You have to actually apply with a sample article or two. You have to prove that above all else that you're actually articulate and you have valid opinions and thoughts. And you know, we reject actually most writers, we have about a 70-75% rejection rate in the platform. Really? And that's not to say that those guys are, aren't, they're just not right for us and we're only accepting really high calibre guys on the, on the platform with really articulate and, and valuable opinions we think to our readers. Uh, and we've always had that from day one and we'll continue to have that. And I suppose that's where the, the problem and where it lies in citizen journey, if you don't have the closed door, or some sort of filter in it, then you do run into the problems with it. And it's it's not for to, so it's to write the it's creation. Money. It's the creation, the creation process, piece yeah. is massive. Then, like I said, it's always been uh, with us for day one. Rich started out and led that editorial uh, from us from day one, and now he's passed that baton on to move into other areas of the business. But it's been there from day one, and will continue to always be there. Yeah, like John Murphy is our editor in chief, and he's done a fantastic job. So it's a guy we brought in from from Brussels, and uh, he's just he oversees our entire content team now. So he's got a staff on that work with him and ensure that all quality it's all quality content and everything's edited. I think one of the biggest things for us when we started off was we edited every single article from day one, proofreads and just to ensure that it was a high quality and that helped us to gain to gather momentum because when a lot of websites start off and there's just one guy running it or just a couple of guys, then there, there tends to be a lot of mistakes and grammatical errors, but we focused on really putting out quality content from day one. And I think people just bought into that and realized that we were going to become a serious operation and thankfully we're getting there. We're, we're a lot stronger than we were. But, we're really turning into a big force in media in the UK and Ireland. And what's your revenue model? How, how did you get to a point where you can now charge, or rather you can now pay people fair whack of money if they're writing for you? Yeah, I mean, it's, we're like any other publication in that regard. The business model and creating content is one thing, but then like, like any other publication, we work with brands around the world, particularly in the UK and Ireland. And like brands are spending more than ever online now they're just this kind of whole. They're just going to dump all this money into visual ads. Is gone. Like the brands are realizing that the power is in the content. You know, if they're powering written and audio and visual content, and people are enjoying the content in an inintrusive way, where people aren't blasted with a banner ad and the content. So how is that working? How is the advertising for for print online changing? It's completely changing the content. Like we see more and more deals now. Guys want the brands want to create content with the publisher. It's like sponsored content. content. Sponsored content, but in a way that the user. It's powered by content, so it's not in truth the user's aware that the brand's involved in creating the content, they enjoy it, positive feel for the brand from that, and obviously that's up to the brand to work with the right publisher, but yeah, that, like that's it, where it's going. It's subliminal, you need to be sub subliminal. People, people don't necessarily hate ads, they just hate shit ads, basically. For years people just completely just forced ads on people that were terrible and just really, really intrusive and just ruined the whole user experience on site. If you provide ads that give some sort of value to people, then they don't care about ads. So everyone the understands that the ad is relevant to the end user. It needs to be relevant. Like, I mean, if we were doing one on Irish rugby, you know, we'd have to have some. The brand would have to have some sort of affiliation with Irish rugby. Or if we were doing the UK and Premier League, 
like if we were doing tours, say at Stamf Stamford Bridge wanted tours to be promoted, or Chelsea wanted tours at Stamford Bridge to be promoted, we'd create an article around that, the best games at Chelsea and stuff like that. So Chelsea fans still get benefit from reading it, but then you could subliminally push in the thing that the tours are now available and stuff like that. I think that's important going forward. I find this quite exciting because, uh, without mentioning any names, one of the big incumbent uh, Irish broadcasters is a devil for putting in, for me anyway, very inappropriate ads. Uh, in the middle of, of content and I find that very frustrating but these guys have been in business for, for many many years what's your background you didn't come from a journalism you didn't come from an advertising background how did you suddenly decide you were going to do this and, and, and nail it <laughs> uh, I don't know if, if maybe you know or many know the backstory that we actually found upon the arena but we were both accepted onto the Ignite incubation program in UCC both as individuals so the guy that actually runs that program Eamon Curtin took a bet, and he's taken a bet pre-idea or founding stage, okay. that we'd merge, and, and we did, uh, and, and we never looked back. Richard had his own business, uh, and, and they had mine, and we created Pony Dream together. But uh, I was just a commerce graduate that wanted to go into startups. That's all I, I really knew at the time. Um, looked at the idea and concept of Pony Dream and thought, there's one I can get started. I don't have any money in the bank. Relatively, I can get off Because you weren't a technical person either. Yeah, no, I wasn't technical like either. Either. So, uh, and then it's I funny enough, neither of us are technical. To be honest. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we learned the basics yeah, about it, but yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't. We're still and how, how then, how, who wrote the first line of code for you? We, we built out? it ourselves like, uh, it? overnight, yeah. Yeah, over a weekend. Um, Using what kind of technology? We just used WordPress, like, really? and then yeah, yeah, just taught ourselves online, things like that. This was that's the beauty about 2015 or 2014. We started and stuff that we could just, if there was something we didn't know, there was a million Do other people. Do you think you'd have done this five online. years ago? Mm, you could have been harder, harder but more expensive. Harder, yeah. And then 10 years ago? No, Definitely not. No. That's a lot more expensive. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's great for us yeah, because yeah. the guys that have been sitting on their halls for the last 10 years, like we're comfortable and it worked. There's guys like us coming in disrupting it. Yeah. That's what we need. Like, that's the only way the media is going to improve. I think as well that like the cost, like we would never, like 10 years ago, you could have done it, but it would have taken so much money to, yeah. to get it. Whereas now, you know, really, that was a key factor because you could have a great idea Back like in 2014, you could say, right, to even get that to product development stage, if it's in med tech, you know, it's, it's going to cost tons, six figures, easy. Yeah, yeah whereas we, those, we, were able, money. we were able to get it started on like 80 euros. Do you know, yeah, like, yeah, like sub 100 yeah. euros. Like, so if you can start a hundred company on sub 100 euros, but then uh, like over the th time of like, let's say the first 12 or 18 months, we replaced all that with sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lot, a lot yeah. of hard work. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, like it's strong now, that, like from a technical standpoint, we have a good team there, know that. But four guys based in tech that are doing a lot of work for us and the site's never been stronger so we're improving it every day so I mean we brought it and I think that's important Ross and I brought it as far as we could in terms of the tech side of things and then realised that there's a million other people smarter than us in this area in Ireland so let's get them involved and that's how the, the business has continued to develop it's just about getting smarter people in around us and realising that they'll do a better job and we can just facilitate it or delegate different roles like you know so where to next for the business we're hiring oh, some exciting news yeah. here yeah we just so we closed a, an investment room for 650k with some very strong investors so um the lead investor is column line of relax payments so, oh wow yeah so he'd be very big now in the fintech industry and loves platforms and really really a great addition to um to pundit arena and also paul davy who who will be joining our board like paul is um was cfo with relax as well another great guy so he's going to really help us there so we're strong in that regard and then we've Graham Kinch, who's uh, head of ads policy at Google. We've a guy based out in Silicon Valley, who's uh, Joe Gallagher, and he's lead data for Reddit. So he'll help us get under the bonnet of our users. There's also Connor Malahan of Carton House, who's really, really strong. Um, there's a few other guys then involved that are really, really helping us out in that regard. Silvio Priatessa as well, who just really has a great um, vision when it comes to tech and things like that, and, and knows we can really scale this and knows how to scale it. Yeah, I think it's spot on what Richard said about earlier when he mentioned like giving it off to people. Like Sylvia is technically a gift, so like he's gonna be way better at that specific role than we could ever be. Like spend fifteen years trying to learn, and then it'll be a waste of my time. Race the riches, but when you give it, get someone in specifically good at something, it's great. And of course, and it's all about the team, yeah. Yeah, all about the team. Yeah, there's more like that's the key. Like even I'm sure you see it more and more with founders. The team must get mentioned yeah. ten times more than ever the founder, anyone that's leading it up. Um, and obviously in the round as well, we had participation for Enterprise Ireland with Match Fund and then, you know, local Enterprise Office in South Cork would be an instrumental Justine to bring the company well. on. 
Um, and definitely enterprise. How important is the, uh, the local enterprise office being? Because oh, what I see traveling around the country is a lot of the time they're doing a lot more than I believe they're getting credit for. And I think a lot of people don't think to go to their Leo. Yeah, we, we wouldn't be where we are without our Leo, simple as that. I guess they provided us with a lot of funding and grants at the start. Um, like we wouldn't have been able to hire our first employee without them. Sean O'Sullivan and the lads down in South Cork, Leo have, have just been incredible for us. Like the business is probably on its knees. We needed, we were running low, really, really low on cash and we weren't being paid. And then there was this, I suppose this help from the local enterprise office where they provided us with cash to really just push forward the business and, and build a team. And we took in our first employee, Rob, Rob Lyons, actually team member, I hate the word employee. And Rob was, um, like the, the Leo were instrumental in getting him on board and, and Rob was crucial for those early days as well. He's still with us now and he's in a, a senior enough role in the, in the company as well, which is great. I think it's fair to say as well, like EI and the Leo are now working like completely together. And like with the rebrand just wasn't a rebrand, like it was complete alignment. So when we progressed into Enterprise Ireland, it's a complete delight to see the Leo funded company that they worked through all the way from the idea stage all the way through was now going on to Enterprise Ireland to HBSU. And yeah, and there's that, definitely that was, a true That was job yeah. done, you know, for everyone involved and there's, there's complete connect there. It made I'm not saying it wasn't easier, before, like, but I certainly noticed it in Yeah, I've seen it through was, the yeah. IBYE program, observing it, that there's definitely, once basically, if you get the application for IBYE nailed and then you attend the, the various seminars, that you're much better set up for them being successful going down the EY or sorry the EI. It's, uh, it's like a back. form of it's like a form of due diligence for EI, like it early, is, yeah. early stage yeah. due diligence. Like for us the the path like the path that we took was through an accelerator programme and then we went to a local enterprise office, then we went straight into HPSU and closed the inv the private investment around the funding. I mean that's a great path to, to take because people just aren't aware that there is support there like the Leo and these accelerator programmes and it's just like constant due diligence. If anything, there's certain areas of our business that we have to, that we may not have enjoyed having to keep um, perfect, but we had to do in order to be part of Leo, in order to be HBSU. And I suppose they're, they're just turning us into a much stronger company, like, and um, that's important too. So like we could see that clear path from day one, and it's kept everything just on board and on track. You have a very inspiring story to share that between the two of you, you decided you want to get into startups. You weren't necessarily technical people, you got involved in the program through your university and then you got involved in, in the various other schemes that the, the Irish government are effectively are providing. You worked incredibly hard and you know, that's well done for getting as far as you've gotten. But it's also very cool to see that this is a story other people should be able to say, yeah, I can do this, I can relate to these guys. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. I definitely hope that people see it and say, like, like we'd scratch it even in college. Like, we, I know we've, we've built something, and more importantly, we've built a great team and a, and a good brand that people see it as. We certainly get that response, and it, and it is there for people to do. Like, the support structure is there. I think people just need to get it around their head and, and start on the process and keep it getting going bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and it's definitely there. So what advice would you have, then, for somebody who's maybe... Uh, either in university or maybe they're out of university, but they want to get involved in a startup. I'd what say, should they do? You know, if you if you have an idea, I would approach any of the EI programs, frontiers, any of the incubators, any of the accelerators. Because if you get into those, there's a learning yeah, curve for three to nine months. You're going to be brought from, especially if you're a complete newbie to the industry, you're going to be brought into kind of what what funding you need to do, how to all the structures, corporate structure, everything. You have a learning experience. And as well, you get opens your networks. Like every time we meet someone, like we know each other through client. We entered uh, the Irish Israeli Business uh, Competition to bring companies there. The LD Star Tel Aviv. Star Tel Aviv. We got a prize in that. We know Clyde. Now we're friends with Clyde. Clyde puts us in touch with you. So as soon as you enter all these things, yeah. it's like a network. And that's a good thing about Ireland being small. It it's right, so it's connected. Right, so yeah. And then by the time you it's come, it's all network. Like the network is key. And people will say that to you. It's very cliched, like at the start and, and things like that. But it's so like. It's so important, like if we were to take, say the meetings we have today, like we, we have a few meetings this afternoon, if we were to put on a board how we met this person and mm. did a web, mm. I could say the whole thing is intertwined, even though the people that we're meeting, they're two different individuals that might know each other, we're connected through some other, like a connector like Clyde, yeah. and I think if I was starting off my business, like I'd definitely just concentrate on the network for the start, like concentrate on the network from the get-go, and then just work on increasing that. I'd also get on to Clyde too. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a spider on, on for Google Index. Yeah, yeah. So it's like your own, your own spider, and you yeah, actually yeah. have your own index web out there. 
in a way. And that's the good thing about Ireland being small is that you can actually make it a dent and get you. You nearly hit every down. single network. Like if there was someone in Ireland that you need to get to, three, four, or five months of networking, you can get to that person. And that's slow, like you can actually get there within a week, I'd say, you know. Everyone's within like it's not five degrees of separation or six degrees, like it's about two in Ireland, which is great and that because there are so many success stories as well. You can reach out to guys who are maybe a year ahead of us, we can reach out to and say, lads, you know, you raised your investment, what did you do next? What did you learn and stuff? And then just guys who are probably a year behind us can reach out to us as well, you know. It works both ways. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and actually, one point to people is actually, like Rich said there, people in Ireland are so open to helping people starting off. Like, yeah. if someone emailed me and Rich and said, hey, can I get a coffee for 30 minutes or an hour? I'm starting a business idea. 100% say yes. And if we email someone that's five or ten years in it, they'll hundred percent say yes. Just like get it out of your head that people are gonna say no to you. How can you say no to someone that's emailing you saying, I'm starting a business, could you grab a coffee with me? Of course, you, everyone's been there, everyone's done it. Same it's thing a, again. It's a great place, it really is a great place to start then. Yeah. Lad, six months time, where are you gonna be? Or where would you like to be? Yeah, so we wanna to get to two million users by June, we want four million by the end of December. Okay. It's ambitious, but that's where we wanna get there, the targets. Well Colin Lyon had that kind of ambition with Relax. Yeah, that's it, exactly. We can learn a lot from Cullum. I mean, for a guy who built up a company and sold it for a lot of money and held on to a lot of the equity, it's just a massive success story and we can definitely learn under his stewardship and, and mentorship. But there's other guys there as well who are really helping us, like John Lamphere in Quancast, who was also running Facebook. He was our first investor and John has this, I suppose, not, not so much anti-Irish, but he has this like American visionary view of things whereby, you know, everything is possible and you can get stuff done. Um, if people see you trying to be ambitious and reaching out for four million users, sometimes they're saying, you know, that's a lot, maybe bring it back to training. There is this issue that if you're in Ireland and you, if you're Irish and you go to the US and you're kind of like, ah oh, yeah, I've got this idea, ah oh, sure, I don't know if it'll work out, you'll be laughed off the stage where you, you just won't get another meeting. Whereas <laughs> if you're in Ireland, you say, yeah, no, I'm absolutely going to smash this and we disrupt the market, you're just going to get laughed off. We, we were in a pitch, we were in a pitch for, we, we were over in Silicon Valley during the summer, we were in this pitch and it was with an American guy and he was talking about our revenue and things like that and we were being somewhat conservative and mm. it's like, oh, we're going to get to three or four million or, or whatever. And he's like, no, no, that's that's not great. And it's like, I want more. And he's like, oh, what do you want? Like, and it's like, 10 million? And he's like, more, more, more. And then I was like, I don't know, a billion revenue in four Brilliant. years. And he's like, yeah, I'm interested. So you gotta <laughs> I, like, I just balance. literally pulled that number yeah. out of my yeah. out of the sky. And they were delighted, you know, but they just want you to... Put back really into the room, you gotta have that vision. Yeah, and, yeah. and you've gotta back yourself, you gotta have confidence in yourself, you gotta go after it. I think there's a fine so, line in Ireland though within saying like, okay, here's what we think we can do, but we're gonna go out and say, we're gonna do something that's considered very ambitious, but somewhat people can see it's, it's actually realistically achievable. And then in, in the States, it is this outlandish, like, okay, this is long shot, but there is a good chance these guys can do it. And in Ireland, like, especially if you're raising a seed in Ireland, you have to keep it somewhat realistic. Yeah. And that's just where you are. And, and you have to, that's the environment. People are going to give out about it. But, you, you know, as a guy said to me, you're not in San Francisco. Yeah. And, and you have to appreciate that. But that's not to say in Ireland, you know, 650K is, is a good seed in the States still. You mm -hmm. know, and it's, it's a big ground. So... I definitely think they, it's it's all about the founders, how they raise it. They need, you know, investor, I would say, needs belief in the founders and needs belief in the, in the product. And definitely a rich venture, their chairman, having a strong chairman behind you, having yeah, strong money advisors, really helps. advisors, you know, without our solicitor and accountant, we wouldn't be here today. We have a great relationship with yeah. them and our chairman. Those three people are key to us raising around. Like and again, that goes back to the team. We had many ups and downs in terms of raising investment. Like, you know, it just, people tell you it takes so long, but it actually does. And that's another thing that's cliche, but... It actually takes longer than people tell you. And we had many, many ups and downs with just the people around us in terms of like John and PJ and Dave, our solicitors and accountants, and just everyone in our network uh, that were really close and helped us out, like took us away from some bad deals that we could have fallen into, you know? So and we've got advisors early on. That's, yeah. the that's key, like, you know, and I guess the important thing and a bit of advice to anyone who's starting off their business, like we said no to, um, well, we had no money. We were in a room, as Ross said, probably the same size as this small. There was just three of us on the team. We were just after hiring Rob. We were offered a hundred grand to keep the business going in a deal that wasn't good for us, but the hundred grand was really, really important. Something. We needed the money. Mm. I remember the two of us sitting down and we were in the car in the car park and we said, look, this just doesn't sit right with us. I'd say we wouldn't be sitting here now, you know, and it's important to say, say no to the bad money too. Because for two guys who were out of college and didn't have a penny, like a hundred grand is a lot of money. Mm. And uh, just when we said no, that's, that was a big learning curve for us. So it's important to get the smart money, as you said. 
Yeah, you, you, as well, like on that, you think 100 grand is if it's in your current account. You, you put that into a company account divided by, let's say, three. Yeah, yeah. That's 33k ahead for, yeah. for employees. Now you've only got three last. guys. And then you're reading the paper that someone's hiring 20. You know, and, and the reason they're hiring 20 is because they've raised 20x in here. Like, it's, it's, it is relative. People, like, that definitely for us, I remember changing in my mindset in that when you think of company money raising, you think of it and what the company's going to do. Not as if to say, someone said, there's 650k in your current account there. Obviously, as a person, yeah. that would be a massive Jerry Kalana talks about this. He invested, I think it was 50, 50k dollars into Twitter, 108,000 users. And he says, you know, what are you going to do with the money? You know, if, if I think that's the big thing when you ask somebody actually, okay, you need to raise money. What are you going to do with it? Most people can't tell you. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. It's important to, to your point to, to figure out, like, what, what are you going to do? How long is that kind of money? Is, is that money going to last when you break it down like that? Yeah. There's the, uh, like a, an important thing to note as well is that like there's this not so much two types of business there's millions of types of businesses but like we raise money because we want to scale this outside of Ireland the UK we want to do it as quick as we can and we really raise investment if you have a business that you can bootstrap then bootstrap it you know and things like that I think there's a lot of people think that there's the startup dream go out raise loads of money and then do that but you know only raise money if you need to and we believe in what we're doing so we raised up we raised money yeah we got the cash but we gave up piece of a company that two of us own it's no longer just myself and Ross's company you know and that's a big thing but we did that to give ourselves the, the best opportunity to create it so if there's someone out there listening and they're thinking oh I'd love to raise investment don't just do it for the cash like do it if you need it because if you can bootstrap then by all means bootstrap because you can hold on to it you know and then there's a balance I mean like do you do you go how much do you raise your shed of it or do you raise less of it I think there's no right answer in this everyone's got to find the right answer for them and in some cases, and on what they want to do, like, do you want to create a lifestyle business? Well, then don't go raise a load of venture funding. Do you know, if, you, if that's what yeah. makes you happy, do what you love, right? Don't yeah, I think sometimes people forget that it, it is okay to do a lifestyle business, provided yeah. that it's not his lifestyle funded by somebody else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever makes people happy, whatever yeah, 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 yeah. they yeah. up in the morning, they yeah, yeah. want to do what they want to do. And if the end goal is you want to create a 100 employee business around the world, then you probably will go need to go down to venture. And if you want to do it quickly in three, four years, five years, you definitely will. So be clear about what you're doing. Yeah, like anybody. a good thing for us was we raised a hundred thousand already prior to this round, like a pre-seed round, and uh, we said, look, we're going to get two million users. These guys have invested a hundred k in us. We're going to get two million users. We've gone to the VC conference every year, even when we were just starting off, and met with people and said, look, we'll be back to you when we have the million users. We used a hundred grand. We got two million users and made it a lot easier then for us to to raise money this time around. So now we're telling people we're going to get to four million users or five million users. And if we need to raise another and um, another VC round or something for bigger money, then we'll have hit our targets and we'll You've get got a that. stronger. Yeah, those targets will, yeah. will help guide that progression, guys. Ross and Richard, it's been an absolute pleasure. Your energy and enthusiasm is incredibly inspiring, and uh, I'm excited to see what the next six months is going to bring. Yeah, cheers, thanks, cheers. Thanks, 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 th